Okay, so now let's look at example three. We're still under the set of directions to solve, but it's a little bit busier than some that we've seen in the past. Please remember, and I forgot to tell you, that at this point, calculators are possible so for you to use. So if the values get a little bit large, please feel free to get your calculator out because you will have access to them in class. So as we look at this particular example, again, we're going to put a line through the equal sign and to create our different sides so we can take action that we need to over that equal sign. But before we do that, our checklist says, if you see parentheses, you have to distribute. Because I can't combine on the left-hand side the 5x with the negative 8, following order of operations, there's no power, what I'm going to do is I'm going to distribute that 3 to every single term inside of the parentheses on the left-hand side. So again, it's like 3 times 5x, and it's 3 times negative 8. And whatever you say those results are are what you write. So 3 times 5x is 15x. 3 times negative 8 is a negative 24. And notice that's what I'm writing. On the right-hand side, we're going to do the same thing. I can't combine inside of the parentheses negative x and positive 7. There is no outside power, so now I'm down to multiplication. And what we're going to do is multiply that negative 2 not only to the negative x, but the negative 2 to the positive 7. Notice that after the 7, the parenthesis closes, so that means the negative 2 does not get multiplied to the negative 12x. So our negative 2 times negative x is a positive 2x. Our negative 2 times 7 is a negative 14. And that negative 12x just carries down untouched and unchanged. So then our next step is to look for fractions. There are none. After we look for fractions, we have to try to combine some similar terms. So I have, on one side, on the right-hand side, I have a positive 2x, and I have a negative 12x. So my signs are different, so I'm going to subtract the numbers. So 12 take away 2 is 10, and because the 12 is negative, I keep that negative with it. We're changing coefficients here as we add or subtract these polynomials only. So 2x take away 12x is a negative 10x. On the left-hand side, it just stays the same. So at this point, I'm boxing my variable terms, and I'm going to look at this and say which value is smaller. Well, negative 10 is smaller than 15x. So the opposite of a negative 10 is a positive 10, and I take that action to both sides. So on the left-hand side, I now have 25x take away 24. The x's on the right cancel out, and I'm left with just negative 14. Reboxing the variable, the negative 24, the constant term comes across as a positive. Cancels out, I have 25x equals here, and be careful, our signs are different, so we're going to subtract, and we get 10. Now I'm going to come off here onto the right a little bit, just to finish this problem out. So right now I have 25x equals 10. At this point, the variable terms on one side, numerical terms on the other, so I'm going to break apart that coefficient from the x by doing the division. Focus always on the x. So I have x equals, and then we get this 10 25ths. So to simplify this fraction in common, you ask, what's that largest value in common? And ultimately, if I divide each by 5, I have a 2 in the numerator and a 5 in the denominator. Do not be afraid of decimal or fractional answers. In Algebra 2, it is definitely a possibility for every single example that you see. So don't be thrown off if you do get a lot of fractions. It might not happen, but it certainly can. Okay, in the next example that you see, I'm going to go through this, the checklist, having you take action. If you need to pause the video, please do so. So we're going to put a line through the equal sign, and I actually will do that with you. And then we're going to ask, if you see any parentheses, distribute. If you see any fractions, get rid of them. If you can combine similar terms on one side, do so. Remember, this is an addition or subtraction move, just like adding and subtracting polynomials. Box your variable terms. Move your smaller variable term to your larger through an addition or subtraction move. Move your constant terms onto the opposite side, also through an addition or subtraction move. 
And at this point, you should have constant term on one side, variable term on the other, and last, you divide the coefficient away from the variable to both sides. Let's look at this and see how you did. Again, there were no parentheses. There were no fractions, so the first thing I try to do is combine similar terms, but I can't combine the negative 2x with the positive 9 on the left-hand side, and I can't combine the 2x with the negative 7 on the right. So I box my variable terms, and I look and say which one is smaller. Negative 2 is smaller than positive 2, so I'm going to take the negative 2, I'm going to move it across the equal sign as a positive 2x. Cancels on the left, and I'm left with just a positive 9. 2x plus 2x is 4x, and then that negative 7 just comes down. So I rebox my variable term. Now my constant terms have to move onto the opposite side. I have to move that negative 7 away from the 4x, so I do so because it is negative 7 as a positive 7. And again, whatever action you take to one side, you take to the other. 9 plus 7 is 16. Now that I have variable term and constant term on each on opposite sides, I divide the coefficient away from the x, and my end answer is x equals 4. In our next guided practice, we're going to do the same thing. Here's our line through the equal sign. You're going to ask if you see parentheses, distribute. Do you see fractions? If so, get rid of them by multiplying every term by the denominator value. Can I combine similar terms on one side? Box your variable terms. Move your smaller variable to your larger variable across the barrier wall, that equal sign line, through addition or subtraction moves. Move your constant term onto the other side. And then divide the coefficient away from the x. All right, let's check this one out. Again, first checklist, do you see parentheses? If so, follow order of operations and go there first. Can't combine the x with the 2. There's no outside powers, so I have to distribute the 3 to each. So it's 3 times x, 3 times positive 2. That gives me 3x plus 6 on the left-hand side. On the right-hand side, we also have parentheses. I can't combine the x with the 4. There's no power. So that 5 that's multiplied through the parentheses is going to distribute as 5 times x and 5 times 4. So that gives me 5x and a plus 20. So at this point in time, what we're doing is saying, do I see any fractions? And I don't. Can I combine similar terms? And I can't combine an x with a constant term. So then I'm going to box my variable terms. I'm going to move my smaller to the larger, so 3 is smaller than 5. And we do so by taking the opposite sign, and the action goes to both sides. The 3x's cancel on the left. I left with a positive 6. 5x's take away 3x's, leaves me with 2x's. And I rebox my variable term. From there, the constant term has to move to the other side, so a positive 20 crosses as a negative, action taken to both sides. So positive 6 minus 20, signs are different. We subtract and we get negative 14. Last step that I have is to pull the coefficient away from the x term, so I have a positive 1x at the last step. And so I have negative 14 divided by 2, which gives me here a negative 7 equals x and I'm done for my guided practice. All right, in our self-check example, remember now to pause the video, try the problem yourself, and then check your result with mine. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is line through the equal sign, and we're going to look and say, do we have any parentheses? And we don't. Next check, do we have any fractions? And in fact, we do. So I look at my denominator number, which is a 3, and I multiply every single term by positive 3, all of our terms. So I get 15 equals negative 21, and remember that we did that so that those 3's cancel, and I'm left with a positive 2x. So then I look on one side, now that fractions are done, say, can I combine any similar terms? And I can't on the right-hand side. 
So notice I box the variable term on the right and I include that plus with the 2x. You still need to remember that the sign of a term is in front of it. So because I only have one variable term, the 21, which is negative, has to cross as a positive. And I end up with 36 because both are positive. And I have a 2x all by itself, which again is positive on the right-hand side. We're now going to say we have the variable term and the constant term on opposite sides. So I divide over the coefficient away from the variable term. So I have a positive x equals, and 36 divided by 2 is 18. Okay, so for our last example, we're going to look at this se example 7 self-check. Again, pause the video. For some reason, I can't get it in slideshow format, so I'm going to have to try to squeak it through in this smaller print, so bear with me on that part of it. So we're going to again look at our parentheses, and we're going to say, can I, distri um, excuse me, can I combine similar terms, which I can't? Is there an outside power, which there's not? So I'm going to take that negative 4, and I'm going to multiply it to the 2x, and I'm going to multiply it to the positive 5. So I end up with negative 8x and a minus 20 on that side. On the other side, we have a negative x minus 9 in parentheses. I can't combine. No outside power, but the 2 is going to be distributed to each. So it's 2 times negative x and 2 times negative 9. So it gives me a negative 2x and a minus 18. And again, notice after the 9, the parenthesis closes, so that minus 4x just carries on its way down. From there, I try to say, do I have any fractions, which I don't. Can I combine similar terms on one side, which if you look, I have a negative 2x, and notice a negative 4x, the sign of a term is in front of it. So I get this negative 8x minus 20 equals, and because my signs are the same, I get a negative 6x minus 18. From there, what I have to do, box your variable terms. Which one is smaller? That would be the negative 8x. So I add 8x to both sides. Now I'm short on space here, so I'm going to come to the right and show you that that result would have been a positive 2x. And because I'm short on space, I'm going to move the constant term, that negative 18, away from that right-hand side and push it to the left. And I'm going to do so as a positive because it is a negative. So negative 20 plus 18 gives me a negative 2. Now that I have the constant term on one side, variable term on the other, I divide. And my final answer for x is negative 1. So this concludes your lesson. Make sure you please look these notes over and bring them to class.